for joining us. Uncle Babs, thanks so much. I'm sorry, I didn't inform you earlier. Thanks for joining. We're going to start shortly. Thanks for, for joining me tonight. And, and I will be using English, but I will have to use your reverse word to speak about this. I'm using English because I want and uh, some uh, individuals in America to, to hear me because they have, they have been requesting for me to use English often. But notwithstanding, I'm a Yoruba citizen and I'm very proud of my indigenous Yoruba language. Speaking English is, 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 is akin to slavery. If you look at all the countries in Southeast Asia, all of them speak their indigenous language. And that's one reason why they are well developed now. So tonight, folks, I'm going to talk about unity system. And I'm going to highlight the fraud in that. And then you will agree with me with the conspiracy of the Fulani to continue to subjugate the Yoruba nation. Now, from the beginning, let me just quickly say here now, 
there is a, there's a video that's been circulating in which the Fulani in Nigeria are saying that they are going to bring in Fulani from the entire West African countries to Nigeria to come and help them to fight their war. Let me just quickly correct this erroneous impression. Fulani are very few in West Africa. Fulani don't have the men. They don't have the civilization. They don't have the wealth. They don't even have the weapon to fight ordinary Kanuri. Kanuri people defeated them. The Bogum people defeated them. The people in the Middle Belt during the Yadi, they defeated them. The Yoruba defeated them as well. So Fulani don't have the men. They don't have the military training. They don't have the capacity. But Fulani people, they have one benefactor, and that is the, the English people. The English are using the Fulani to subjugate the Yoruba nation. So when the video in which the Fulani were saying that they are going to mobilize men across West African country, what they meant was that they would get the support of the English, and they have always get that support of the English, but we are putting that support to test, and we will end that support. Because if the English people can vote for Brexit, simply because they want to control their immigration, that is the number of people who come in and out of their country, because of that, they voted for Brexit in order to leave the European Union. The young Yoruba are saying that we are going to control the wealth of the Yoruba people. And that means that we are going to put an end to the full and subjugation of the Yoruba nation and their allies, the English. So let me just correct that. The Fulani has no men, no military power whatsoever. They have always been supported by the English. It is the English that are behind the Fulani to continue to subjugate the Yoruba nation. That is the more reason the Yoruba nation, particularly its youth, must support President Trump, must relate and have trading relationship with the white Americans, with the Russians, with the Chinese, as well as with the Brazil. I want to see how the English will continue to subjugate us by supporting the Fulani when we have all of the support. So this is just by the way, it's an introduction to open this uh, public speech for tonight. So I will be talking about the unitary system and I'll be highlighting the fraud within this system and how they've used this system to subjugate the Yoruba nation. On the 27th of May, 1967, Mr. Yakubu Gowan created 12 states from its original three regions. The regions in Nigeria then, as of 1967, were Western region, which is predominantly Yoruba, Eastern region, which is predominantly Igbo, and then Northern region, which is predominantly Awusa Fulani. Among the 12 states that were created in 1967, I will be concerned about three states. I'm going to use these three states to show to the young Yoruba how the Fulani have subjugated you. You see, you will agree with me that the English started trading with the Yoruba around 1760. And then for 200 years, they colonized us. But if you consider when they are next Lagos, around 1864 or, or thereabout, they actually colonized the Yoruba land for 95 years. Throughout the period they colonized us, they were literally sending our ancestors into slavery in the United States of America and across North America. And essentially, they were stealing Yoruba resources to build England. Exact thing is what the Awusa Fulani have been doing since the suspension of regional government in 1966. So this is what I'm going to show to you. And Awusa Fulani has the backing of one ally, the English. And to the Yoruba Muslims, let me quickly say to you, the English are predominantly Christians, but they are supporting predominantly Awusa Fulani for one thing, subjugation of the Yoruba people, to steal the resources. So it is not about religion. Awusa Fulani would like to pretend to you that this is about Islam. It is not about Islam. If the English stop selling weapons to Awusa Fulani, believe you me, we are going to overrun them immediately. But the English will not stop because the English are targeting the Yoruba waterways, the Yoruba port, the Yoruba forex exchange market, the Yoruba capital market, the Yoruba revenue. That is what the English are benefiting from. This is what I'm going to expose tonight. So it is not about religion. The English are predominantly Christian, yet giving support to 
apparently Aousa Flani, who are Muslims, just to continue to enslave the Yoruba nation. We will put a stop to that because we are the generation that will do it. So let me continue with that. So these three states created in 1967, be guided that there were 12 states that were created in 1967. But I'm consigned to show you how the unitary system has been used to subjugate the Yoruba nation. I'm going to be emphasizing three states. And the three states are Lagos State, Western, not Western states, and Kano State. I hope you take notice of that. In 1967, Gowan created 12 states from the original three regions. I'm going to be concerned about three major states, and these are Lagos State, Northwestern State, and Kano State. In 1967, Lagos State has the highest population in Nigeria. The population was estimated at 2.4 million people. That was the number of people living, working, getting education in, from Lagos State. The Northwestern State and Kano State had an estimated 2 million people respectively. So in 1967, Lagos State has the highest population in Nigeria, 2.4 million. West, Northwestern State and Kano State had 2 million population each. Again in 1967, Lagos State and Northwestern State were the same in terms of the number of local governments. Both states have 20 local governments each. So in 1967, there were 20 local governments in Lagos State. In 1967, Northwestern State had 20 local governments as well. Kano State, as far back as 1967, had less than 20 local governments. So you have to note this. So the bottom line of this story, when you want to see how I'm going to interject this, is that I'm going to show you how Aousa Fulani used states, local government, population, and landmass to subjugate the Yoruba nation, to literally use the Yoruba wealth to build the North. I am no longer particular about talking about oil wealth, because you all know now from my research, which majority of you have rejected in the past, you all now know that Nigeria is not sustaining on oil wealth. It is the taxes collected from Yoruba land that is mainly sustaining Nigeria as a country. In case you don't know this, the Yoruba nation is the majority in terms of the population of Nigeria. We are 25% of Nigerian population. In case you have no idea about this, 49% of Nigerian income, that is the revenue of the federal government, 49% comes from Yoruba land. And in case you still don't have an idea about this, Yoruba alone produces 80% of Nigeria GDP. So we are the economic backbone of Nigeria. But you will see how we have been enslaved by the Aousa Fulani. But the Aousa Fulani are not powerful to enslave us. They had the support of the English. So that is why we have to confront the people who have always been given the backbone to the Fulani, who are the English. This is a long term battle. So to go back to the story I was telling you, in 1967, General Gowan created 12 states from the three regions. The three regions of 1967 were Western region, Eastern region, and the Northern region. As of 1967, Lagos State had the highest population in Nigeria, 2.4 million. Northwestern State and Kano State, as of 1967, both had 2 million population respectively. In 1967 as well, Lagos State and Northwestern State had the same local government, same number of local government, 20 local government each. Kano State, as of 1967, has less than 20 local government. But Lagos State remains just a state with its original 20 local government. From 1967, Lagos State local government, number of local government in 1967 was 20. In 2018, this number of local government in Lagos State, it is still 20 in 2018. But the Northwestern State was divided into four states, which are Shokoto State, Niger State, Kebi State, and Zamfara State. 
1976, the northwestern state was divided into two. It was divided into partly Shokoto State and partly Niger State. In 1991, Kebi State came out of Shokoto State. In 1996, Zamfara came out of Shokoto State. Now, let me now tell you the number of the local government of this four state. Be guided, be guided, please. In 1967, Lagos State was just one state and it has 20 local government. In that same 1967, Northwestern State has, it was just one state with 20 local government. But from 1976, the Northwestern State was divided into Shokoto State and Niger State. In 1991, Kirby State came out of Shokoto State. In 1996, Zamfara State came out of Shokoto State. Now, you have one state in 1967 that has been divided into four states by 1996. And let us look at the local government in each of these four states. Niger State consists of 25 local government. Kirby State consists of 21 local government. Zamfara State consists of 14 local government, and Shokoto State consists of 23 local government. You will be, I want you to relax. I'm talking about state, local government, and landmass, as well as population. You'll see the fraud. So, the Northwest State, a single state prior to 1976, was divided three times between 1976 and 1996 into four states. These four states, among themselves, have 83 local government area from its original 20 local government area in 1967. So a state that has 20 local government in 1967 was divided three times into four different states and with a combined numbers of 83 local government, while Lagos State remains a state and 20 local government. You will recollect that Tinubu was frustrated about this analysis I'm making. Tinubu said that, why, why should that be the case? Why is Lagos State continue to have 20 local government when the same state like Northwestern State in 1967 has been divided into four different states with 83 local government? Tinubu was upset because you will see, I'm going to call the Constitution section 162, subsection 1 and 2, whereby it's stated that to the revenue has to go to a particular account and you have to share that revenue with the number of state, number of local government, number of population and land mass. You go to see. Tinubu got so upset, he created additional local government for Lagos State, 37 local government. But Mr. Bua, uh, Mr. Obasanjo refused. Mr. Obasanjo refused to allow that local government to be added as part of this Lagos State local government. Up to today, Lagos State still has 20 local government recognized by the federal government. Now, that, uh, the analysis of made is about labor states and not western states. So I hope you're getting it. Now, let me show you what happened to Kano State too. Kano State was originally a single state in 1967 with less than 20 local government, Kano State. But it was divided into Kano and Jigawa in 1991. It was divided into Kano and Jigawa in 1991. Today, hold Kano State that had less than 20 local government in 1967, Kano State alone now has 44 local government, and Jigawa State with 27 local government. So if you combine 44 plus 27, you have 71 local government. Folks, I think I need to, to recap what I've just said. In 1967, Jakubu Gowan created 12 states. I'm focusing on three states now. Lagos State, Western, Northwestern State, and Kano State. In 1967, Lagos State had 20 local government. In 2018, Lagos State is still having 20 local government. But in 1967, Northwestern State had 20 local government, and it was just one state. But by 1991, it has been divided into four different states with 83 local governments among these four states. A state that was with just 20 local governments in 1967 is today having 83 local governments. 
Lagos State 20 local government is still the same now. Kano State, that was just one state in 1967 with less than 20 local government, has been divided into Kano and Jigawa. And today, 2018, Kano and Jigawa are having 44 plus 27 local government, making 71 local government. So you will be, if you have not been doing the research we have been doing as Young Yoruba for Freedom, the next question you will ask me, what the fuck? What is my business with this local government? What is my business with this state? You're going to get to that stage now. We're going to get there. Now, you've realized one thing. Just one state, not Western state, just a single state in 1964 is now four states. Niger, Kebi, Zamfara, and Shokoto. Kano state, just a single state in 1967 is now two states. Kano and Jigawa. This six states combined they have less than 40 local government they now have 83 and 71 local government now let's go to population that is why i've explained how i was afraid to create more states to themselves and more local government to themselves but they don't just create it for fun they create this state and local government to siphon yoruba wealth and resources now let's go to population with discussed state and local government. It should be noted that Lagos State had the highest population in Nigeria as at 1967. The population of Lagos State was estimated at 2.4 million people, while the whole Northwestern State, Northwestern State in 1967, which is today divided into Shokoto, Niger, Kebi, and Sanfara State, had only 2 million population in 1967. Folks, now let us look at what happened in 2006, because 2006 was the last population censor in Nigeria. We have not had any population censor. As of 2006, Lagos State population increased from 2.4 million in 1967 to 9.4 million in 2006. So that is what we got. Lagos State had 2.4 million population, in 1967, as of 2006, Lagos State population is described as 9.4 million. Let me quickly add to this. Remember in 2006, when the federal government was conducting the censor, Ashwaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu was also conducting the censor for Lagos State. I remember then I was still living at Babish Tower in Lagos State when Obasan just chased us away from 1004 Estate. He saw that property to their baby family, uh, Stella Obasanjo's family. That was where I was living before. So when Obasanjo chased us away from there, I moved down to uh, Babish Tower. I was counted at Babish Tower then. There are two sensor uh, personnel, one for the federal, one for the state. So immediately I was being counted by the federal, the state was also counting me. At the end of that exercise in 2006, the federal government said that the population of Lagos State was 9.4 million. But the same population that was counted by uh, Lagos State Censor personnel said that Lagos State was 17 million people. You see, federal government of Nigeria is a criminal gang. Believe you me, it's a criminal gang. The same censor that was counted together by the same people gave different censor figure. But that, was, that is just by the way, be minded, be guided by the fact that in 1967, Lagos State had the highest population in Nigeria, 2.4 million. But by 2006, according to the federal government, which was headed by Obasanjo then in 2006, they said that Lagos State had 9.4 million. Now, let us look at Northwestern State. Northwestern State in 1967 had only 2 million population. Today, Northwestern State had been divided into Shokoto, Niger, Kebi and Zamfara State, four state. I'm going to shock you. A state that was one state in 1967, divided into four states, now has its population increased from 2 million in 1967 to 14 million in 2016. In 2006, from 2 million in, 2000, in 1967, that population of Northwestern State increased to 14 million by 2006. Folks, 
these are all just fake figure believe you me it was all just manipulated by the house of land when that census of 2016 was conducted this guy was the president mr abbas was the president now let us go to hold kind of state in 1967 hold kind of state population was estimated at 2 million people while Lagos state was estimated at 2.4 million people but by 2006 Kano state population, that is Kano and Jigawa, you know Kano has been divided into two. Kano state population had increased from 2 million in 1967 to 15.4 million in 2006. 15.4 million. It had a population of 2 million in 1967. By 2006, according to the census figure conducted by Mr. Obasanjo, Kano State, which is Kano plus Zigawa, now had 15.4 million. Lagos State in, two, in 1967 was the highest in terms of population in Nigeria. It had 2.4 million. But by 2006, the federal government said it has, has increased to 9.4 million. Now, folks, the question you quickly ask yourself, the Northwest population increased from 2 million to 14 million. It was 2 million in 1967. It increased to 40 million by 2016, uh, by 2006 rather. Lagos state population increased from 2.4 million in 1967 to 9.4 million by 2006. Now you ask yourself, the increase between Lagos state and the old Northwestern state was 5 million. So you imagine these 5 million people, you expect them to, have, to contribute the highest to the VAT of Nigeria, because VAT of Nigeria simply means sales tax. When you buy Agbado, when you buy Momo, when you buy Guguru and Epa, you get to pay VAT on it. And it is the people who are consuming this. So when you buy clothes, Tora Bata, Tora Shop, Tora Muomi, Pure Water, you are paying VAT. So you expect a state that claim to have 40 million population to, to be the highest in terms of VAT contribution. But this Lagos state that they claim has 9.4 million population is still contributing 60% of the VAT in Nigeria. This tells you one thing, the population exercise in Nigeria is fake. Fulani constantly fabricates this population, but why are they doing it? This is what you need to know. They are targeting your wealth, and I'm going to show you. Don't forget, I started by telling you that they created more states for themselves, the Ausa Fulani. They created more local government to themselves, the Ausa Fulani. I have just explained how they created more population to themselves. But why are they doing this? You need to know. You need to know. I'm going to quote you a section of the Nigerian Constitution. Nigerian 1999 Constitution. By the way, the Nigerian 1999 Constitution was written by the Ausa Fulani for the benefit of Ausa Fulani only. Everybody didn't write that Constitution. The Igbo didn't write that Constitution. The judge did not participate in writing the Constitution. The Constitution of 1999 was written by the Ausa Fulani for purpose. I'm going to read section 162, subsection 1 and subsection 2 to your hearing. You now know that Ausa Fulani has created more states, right? More local government and more population for themselves. But why are they doing it? They are doing it because of what the Constitution of Nigeria says. And let me read it. Now, under public revenue, if you pick up your Constitution, and you're going to see it. Section 162, subsection 1. That's the first thing I'm going to read. It says, the Federation shall maintain a special account to be called the Federation account. So that means that Nigeria shall have a bank account. The name of the bank account will be the Federation account. That's what the Constitution says. Section 162, subsection 1. It goes back. The Federation shall maintain a special account to be called the federation account into which listen very well folks into which shall be paid all revenue collected by the government of the federation into which shall be paid all revenue collected by the government of the federation so what that section 162 subsection 1 of the nigerian constitution is telling you is that we have a bank account called the federation account all the money the revenue collected by the federal government will go into that account what that implies is this, 
The revenue collected from Yoruba land will go into the Federation account. The revenue collected from Ausa Fulanila will go into Federation account. The revenue collected from Igbo land will go into the Federation account. That's what your constitution says. The constitution continues. Let me now read subsection 2. That is section 162, subsection 2. It says, listing, the president, upon the receipt of advice from the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation, and Fiscal Commission, shall table before the National Assembly proposal for revenue allocation from the Federation account. Let me just hold it there. So this section 162, subsection 1, says that Nigeria shall operate, a, 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 Nigeria shall open a bank account. The bank account, the name of the bank account will be called the Federation account. Into which shall be paid what? All the revenue collected in Yoruba land. All the revenue collected in Ausal Flanila. All the revenue collected in Igbo land shall be paid into this account called the Federation account. That is it. The constitution was written by Ausal Flani. You know, I said in my video about Obasanjo, the enemy within. I said, you are blaming the Awus, uh, Fulani X-Men for demanding Katu colony. You don't know that Obasanjo has already issued a land use act that has taken the land away from the Yoruba families and chiefs and put the land into state government and federal government, which is nothing other than fraud. Because you don't read your constitution. You see, let me tell the Yoruba youth one thing. Knowledge conquers fear. By the time you have an idea of why you are poor, why you are living in America driving car, why you are living in London, taking care of the English old people, doing nonsense job. You don't know that the Awusa Fulani have completely taken over your wealth and resources. That is why we are poor in Yoruba. But my generation is going to put an end to this. So let me go on with this section. So that's what subsection 2 is saying. It's saying the president, upon the receipt of the advice from the Revenue Mobilization, Allocation and Fiscal Commission, shall table before the National Assembly proposal for revenue allocation from the Federation account. But what are these proposal uh, formulas? What are these? I'm going to tell you. And in determining the formula, listing very carefully, the National Assembly shall take into consideration especially population, number of states, number of local government, land mass. I keep telling people that Yoruba youth are very gullible. If you know why you are poor, you are going to fight. The first thing we're doing, we're moving to the second stage anyway. The second stage is going to be bloody. The first stage we are is that we have told you the reason behind why we are going to war. The moment you key into this, you know that you have to fight. And in the course of fighting, that will be casualty, unfortunately. And we will remember you, believe you me. So you see what your constitution says? Section 162, subsection 1, says that Nigeria shall open a bank account. The name of the bank account shall be called the Federation account into which all revenue collected from Yoruba land, collected from Igbo land, collected from Ausa Fulani land, shall be paid into that account. That's what Section 162, subsection 1 of the Constitution of Nigeria, written by the Ausa Fulani in 1999, says. Subsection 2 of Section 162 says that the president, upon the receipt of this revenue, the proposal table before the National Assembly, proposal for the sharing of this revenue. What are they going to consider when they want to share this revenue? Population, number of states, number of local government, and land mass. Should you come buy a euro budget completely? The first thing I explained to you when I opened is that in 1967, Gowan created 12 states from three regions. You see, before 1967, let me quickly explain this to the young Yoruba who are watching so that you get the concept. Before, 19, before 1966, rather, we were practicing regional government. Yoruba were controlling their resources. Igbo were controlling their resources. Awusa Fulani were controlling their resources. That was what we had. That was why Awolowo, because Yoruba were so rich, that was why Awolowo was able to do everything first in Africa. You're currently watching Big Brother Nigeria. It's being run in South Africa. We cannot operate it. Yoruba had television station before the people of South Africa. So that was the system that was in place. 
everyone was controlling their resources until 1966 when that system was suspended by the Igbo and Awusa So in 1967, Gowan created 12 states. The greatest state. Lagos State was one of the states created in 1967. Lagos State was created in 1967. Lagos State was part of the Yoruba Western region. So when some of the Igbos will want to talk, they talk nonsense about Lagos State, saying it was developed by the federal government. Lagos State was part of Western region. But we had 12 states in 1967. I've only discussed three of the 12. Lagos, Northwestern State, and Kano State. In 1967, Lagos had 20 local government, and it had the highest population in Nigeria. As of 1967, Northwestern State had 20 local government, and it was one state. But Northwestern State had been divided into four states, Niger State, Shokoto State, Kebi State, and Zamfara, a one single state, just one single state that had 20 local government as of 1967 is now having 83 local government. 83 local government as of this year. Kano state that was created in 1967 along with Lagos state, with just one state with 20 local government, Kano state today has been divided into two states and from less than 20 local government in 1967, Kano state now has 71 local government. That, that means Kano plus Tigawa states making 71 local government. Now you begin to wonder, why are they creating so many states for the Awusa Fulani? Why are they creating so many local government for the Awusa Fulani? Why are they saying that Awusa Fulani has more population? Because in 1967, Lagos State has the highest population, 2.4 million. Lagos State now, according to the federal government, is now 9.4 million. In that same 1967, Northwestern State had only 2 million population. Northwestern State now had 14 million people. More than Lagos State. Kano State in 1967 had less than 2 million people. Less than 2 million people. Kano State this year, that is Kano plus Sigawa, is now 15.4 million. Now you begin to ask yourself, why are Wusa Fulani creating more states? Why are they having more local government? Why are they having this good population? You need to read your constitution. The constitution of Nigeria is 1999 constitution written by Wusa Fulani. It was written by Abu Salam Abubakar and I order a Wusa Fulani. In that constitution, under section 162, subsection 1, the constitution says that Nigeria shall have an, a bank account, and a bank account. The bank account shall be called the federation account, upon which all the revenue you collected from Yoruba land will go into that account. All the revenue you collected from Igbo land will go into that account. All the revenue collected from Awusa Fulani land will go into that account. That's what section 162, subsection 1 of your constitution says. Section 162, subsection 2 of your constitution says that the revenue, after you have collected all of this revenue and put it in one account, you are going to share it back to where you have collected it. But how are you going to share it? Your section 7, uh, your section 2 of the constitution, section 162, subsection 2 of your constitution says that you are going to share the money according to the number of population, according to the number of states, according to the number of local government, according to the number of land mass, according to land mass. So from what I've said before, who has the population? Awusa Fulani. Who has the states? Awusa Fulani. Who has the highest local government? Awusa Fulani. But are they contributing anything to the money, to the revenue? So they believe smart. They believe that a generation of Yoruba will never rise to fight against this injustice, to fight against this economic injustice. You know why they, have, they, they, they appear to you to be so powerful? Because you don't expect them to put this in the constitution. You don't expect them to create more state. You ask yourself, what are the Yoruba leaders looking at? Agusa Fulani created more state. Why are Yoruba keeping, Yoruba leaders keeping quiet? Why are Afeni Fede keeping quiet? Why is Alafi keeping quiet? Why is Oni keeping quiet? Why is Yoruba political leader keeping quiet? When Awusa are creating more state, more local government, more fake population to themselves, and they are putting in the constitution of Nigeria that we shall share the money by the number of local government states and number of uh, population and uh, all of this nonsense thing. But you ask yourself, why are the Yoruba leaders not speaking up? The Yoruba leaders are not speaking up because they are afraid to die. Is it because Awusa Fulani will kill them? No! It is because Awusa Fulani has the support of the English. Awusa Fulani are not spending Yoruba money alone. Don't be foolish. The English are sitting far away in their London capital, controlling the Fulani. The Fulani are sharing the wealth of the Yoruba with the English. 
When I told you that we are going to work with Mr. Trump, you think we are joking. You don't know something. Some people said to me that, oh, we cannot work with Mr. Trump because he's white, he's racist. You are stupid. It's not racist. It's a businessman. You need to work with people who are going to help to safeguard and protect your interests. If you look at the American country since, since their civil war around 1776, have you ever seen any Englishman become president of America? Irishman. Obama was Irish, combination of Irish and Kenya. Mr. Trump's mother is Scottish. I think his father was German. Bill Clinton has Irish heritage. No English has become president of the United States of America. Don't be fooled. Because let me tell you one thing about this and i'm going to go back then when we talk about white america we're talking we're literally talking about seven people these are the english the french the dutch the spanish the portugal the italian and the belgian these are the seven european people who made what is today the united states of america when america had a civil war you know who were fighting fighting each other the french the dutch and the Spanish were fighting the English. The English were the one that was ruling America before the Civil War. So they were defeated by the combination of the French, Spanish, and Dutch. After that, they, this French, Spanish, and Dutch have been ruling the United States of America. No English has ever ruled uh, the United States of America since the end of that Civil War. Now, the English MP are abusing Mr. Trump because Mr. Trump calls some African countries shit hole. It is the English who made Nigeria to be shit hole. They are working with the full and who has nothing to subjugate and control the wealth and resources of the Yoruba people. The English are responsible for the shit hole of a nation you call Nigeria. So folks, I'm asking you, this is why our leaders were afraid. They don't want to die. So we, this young generation, we have to think very smartly. So if we have the support, the Fulani has the support of the English. If the Yoruba, with our connection in the United States, if you get the support of Mr. Trump, if we get the support of Russia, we get the support of China, who is English? <laughs> Simple. English cannot do anything without NATO. And what is NATO? It is called the United States. Where the United States goes, the English have to follow. The English will be forced not to support Fulani anymore. So, folks, Fulani put all of this nonsense in your constitution. They put all of this nonsense in your constitution. So, you will not be bothered. I will not be bothered if Shokoto State is divided into 200 local government. I will not be bothered as long as my resources, the resources generated from Yorubana, is not used to fund the lifestyle of the people in Shokoto. Like I said in one of my videos. Yoruba is the one paying the salary of Sultan of Shokoto and all Hausa Fulani Emirs. I'm very grateful to God and to our members that majority of Yoruba youth now know that we are not running Nigeria on oil money. We are running Nigeria on taxes essentially generated from Yoruba land. Yoruba, we are the economic backbone of Nigeria. So that was what was put into your constitution. Very corny people. They said we are going to take the money from Yoruba land, you put it into one account called Federation account, we take the money in Igbo land, we put it into that account, we take the money in Ausa land, we put it into that account, and then we are now going to share that money according to the number of states, according to the number of local government, according to the population, and according to land mass. Ausa Kolonile, land mass is Kolile. Sheba Ausa Lonile, She Yoruba Nile, She Di Yoruba Lomi. Why it won't say for me, Pile? Oh, won't say for you, Mikmi? Why it won't say so? And it's about contributes to see who can't you look at by to watch. She knew the balloon contributes. They think that we are going to be slave forever. It is our generation's duty to change the course of history, and we are going to be brutal. Believe you me, there is no freedom without blood. We will take blood. That is a fact because Hausa Fulani are not going to give up very easily. But that is why we need the support of the United States, particularly the support of President Trump and the support of the Republican Democrat. They are just useless. Look at what Obama did for Fulani. Obama literally threatened Jonathan. He said to Jonathan, he's going to kill him if he doesn't live there. Buhari did not win the election. The election was rigged. Jonathan is a very weak man. He chickened her because Obama threatened to kill him. Mr. Trump is a very good man. It is a blessing in disguise for the Yoruba nation to have Mr. Trump as the president of Nigeria. We will get the support of Mr. Trump, believe you me. I like that man. I like him so much. 
I want the Yoruba leader to start talking to him. That is why I've written to Pastor Adeboe and Bishop Oyedeko that, folks, this is the time for you to use your connection and speak to President Trump. He's a Christian. That's why I said in the beginning of this video, the English are predominantly Christian, but they have given military weapon, military training to the Fulani, who are predominantly Muslim, to subjugate the Yoruba nation. You will also get superior weapon from the United States. The Yoruba relates with Russia. We relate with China. Who is English? So, folks, nobody will be concerned. Why should they be using the resources of Yoruba people to develop Hausa Fulani land? Like I used to say, are you aware? Like uh, I was discussing with a friend, we were looking at the population of Nigeria before this, uh, before this presentation, because I have to write everything I'm going to say out. So I discussed with a number of my friends, and uh, during the course of our discussion, I called their attention to the fact that if you look at the population of Yoruba land from age zero, a zero to 14, 15 to like 21. By the time it gets to age 40, it starts dropping down. Imagine only 1.9% of Yoruba population are above 40. 1.9%. By the time you get to 70, you see it's 0.4. It's 0.4% of our population in Yoruba are over 70. Do you know the implication of that? That means our people are dying young at the age of 40. That is the life expectancy. It's less than 50 in Yoruba land. Life expectancy is less than 50 in Yoruba land. People are dying like flies. Meanwhile, the Yoruba are the people doing care assistance in London for uh, old people in England. So the Yoruba with their qualitative education are taking care of the English old people so that they will get to the age of 100. Meanwhile, our whole people are dying in Yoruba land. And Yoruba don't have the consciousness that it is the English that is responsible for our people that are dying. Because the English are using the full need to control our wealth. We take care of their own old people in their old country. We do their care system. We clean their hospitals for them. We clean their toilets. We clean their streets for them. Yet, they work in our own country, subjugating us through full Are you not supposed to wake up? The, there are 27,000 English in Yoruba land. They are working in your shipping line. They are working in your capital market, financial market, uh, forest trading. They are working in your oil and gas. They are not the best educated because the best educated English are in England, working to make sure that that country continues to survive. That country is sustainable. The English who lives in Yoruba land are crude. They don't have the qualitative education that the Yoruba who lives in London or any in English city. But the English are subjugating the Yoruba by propping up the Fulani. So this is the time for Yoruba you to wake up and face them. Hands down. If they voted for Brexit, you see the Scottish did not vote for Brexit. The Northern Irish did not vote for Brexit. It was the English who voted majorly for Brexit. Today they have Brexit. They voted for Brexit for one reason. They want to control their immigration. They are now telling us that Nigeria will not break. Are they crazy? When you are controlling your own immigration, you are telling the young Yoruba not to control their own ports, not to control their own waterway, not to control their own oil. Folks, you need to be reasonable when you are saying Mr. Trump is a racist. It's not. It's not. It's not. Look at that foolish constitution, section 162, subsection 1 and 2. It's telling you that you are going to pull all the revenue collected in Nigeria. You are going to pull it up in an account and you are going to share that money according to number of state, number of local government, number of population. So I was after they created more state, more local government, more fake population to themselves. And so they are taking lion's share. But are they the one contributing the money? No, folks. Just wake up. We are the generation that are going to change the course of history. Knowledge conquers fear. I have said several times. There was a time I was assaulted. Today is February 1st. It's two years that I was assaulted by the police. I said to them, there are 27,000 English who live in my own country. If you think because I live in London, you can beat me up for doing nothing, I can replicate the same thing to your own citizen who live in my country. It's going to be fucking tit for tat. We are the generation that are not afraid of anything because we want to control our wealth and we know how the world rolls. The English are behind the Fulani and they are responsible for the poverty we have in Yoruba land. The shithole that Mr. President Trump called Nigeria, it is the responsibility of the English because they messed up that country. They bring up people who should not be together. They are now 
making debate in their parliament condemning Mr. Trump's statement. <laughs> but they have the one responsible for that. Let me tell you something, folks. In 2008 or 9, I remember, I wrote to my MP here in London, and then my MP sent my letter to the Secretary of the Foreign Secretary of State, David Miliband. Do you know what I said? I challenged them for sending second-hand weapon to Yaradua. Yaradua used those weapons to kill the people in the Niger Delta. People who don't have sense of issue, you've completely forgotten all of that. Yaradua killed so many people before he died. He killed so many people in, in Niger Delta because of their heart. Who gave him the weapon? The English! And you are now saying you don't want to work with Mr. Trump. The English, like I said, and I will repeat, they are not a Muslim nation. England is not a Muslim nation. It's a Christian nation. But they are supporting a radical a Fulani Islamists to subjugate the Yoruba nation. So you think it's about religion. It is not about your religion. It is about your wealth. It is about your wealth. Many of you who sit around in London or any other city doing mundane many jobs, there are better jobs that are there for you in Yoruba land, if not for the fact that the English is propping up the Fulani to subjugate our whole nation. Go to your immigration in Yoruba land. Everybody employed their house of land. Your custom, everyone employed their house of land. CBN, everyone has spread their employed their Ausa flan. Everything in Yoruba land has been taken over by Ausa flan, supported by the English. You said you don't want to work with President Trump. Anywhere American goes, the England will follow them. They can't do it alone. So that is why we have to use our connection to work with President Trump. The Fulani work with Obama. They work with Hillary Clinton. They work with uh, John McCain to send away Jonathan. Let us work with President Trump, folks. Let me tell you, this is what I said. You know, the seven, I've said this thing time without number, the seven main sources of revenue of the federal government. You know, the constitutions under section 162, subsection 1 and 2, says that we should put all our money into one account. <laughs> you then share the money according to number of states. But Yoruba don't have the state. Yoruba don't have the local government. Yoruba don't have the population according to the fake population in Nigeria. So where is this federal government getting this money? Everybody knows because I've been saying this since 2012 anyway. You all know. The federal government is getting money from NNPC. The federal government is getting money from Custom. The federal government is getting money from Federal Inland Revenue Services. The federal government is getting money from the Nigerian Port Authority. It's getting money from the Central Bank of Nigeria. It's getting money from Nigeria Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA. And it's getting money from the Nigeria Liquefied Natural Gas. These seven agencies of the federal government collect 95% of the revenue of Nigeria. 95. Like I've always said to you, 20% of NNPC revenue comes from Yoruba land. 90% of custom revenue comes from Yoruba land. 80% of federal inland revenue comes from Yoruba land. 90% of the Nigerian Port Authority revenue comes from Yoruba land. 60% of CBN revenue comes from Yoruba land. 95% of Nimasa revenue comes from Yoruba land. Yoruba don't contribute anything to the Nigeria liquefied natural gas. It is only the South South that is contributing money. What exactly is Hausa Fulani contributing? Absolutely nothing, particularly the Fulani. In terms of the population of Nigeria, Yoruba are the majority, 25%. In terms of the income of Nigeria, 49% of the revenue of the federal government, Yoruba contributes. In terms of the gross domestic product, you know what that means? It's the size of the economy, what we produce, the goods and services we produce in Nigeria. 80% of it is produced by the Yoruba. <laughs> you now have the full and who are not economic value, who produces nothing, controlling our presidency, in charge of our national assembly, in charge of our, your judiciary, in charge of your military, in charge of all your intelligence, in charge of your federal civil service. You think they have the knowledge? No, I'm asking you. They have been supported by the English. English is responsible for Nigeria to be called shit hole. It is the English that are making your life miserable. That's a fact you need to know. It is not. Some people will come around and say, it, the allies are responsible for Nigerian problem. It's a lie. If the allies are responsible for Nigeria, I dare the Ausa Fulani to make Tinubu the president of Nigeria. They don't trust him because he's Yoruba. You will see how Tinubu is going to change the course of history for them. But they will never put Tinubu there. Even the English will never support Tinubu to be president. Because it's Yoruba. The reason is simple. Your shithole country is the responsibility of the self-serving career politicians in England. They are responsible. For, they are making so much wealth from Yoruba. All of you Yoruba who lives in England, believe you me, all you benefited living in England in one year, 
English companies, English establishment get that in one month from your oil, from your shipping, from your forest market, from your capital market, from everything they control in Nigeria. How do they control it? Through the Fulani. Through the Fulani. How do you say, you're telling me we don't need Mr. Trump. You're just, you're still thinking in the old ways. I've challenged the Yoruba youth. I said, I, I asked them one simple question. One simple question. When we had June 12 crisis, June 12 crisis, name that African country that supported the Yoruba nation. Because you think because somebody has a black skin, it's your friend, no? Name that African country that there was no single African country that supported the Yoruba nation except the Republic and Togo. And it is because they are part of Yoruba land. But we had the support from the Scandinavia country, Finland, Denmark, Iceland. These are the countries that supported us. They are white. And it is not every white that do uh, that, 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 that are, are involved in slavery. No, it's not. I want us to work with President Trump. It's all about business. You are not just working. If America should help Yoruba now to control our resources, to take over our resources from the control of Fulani and the English, so you think Mr. Trump is going to do it for free? No. We're going to give him some businesses. We're going to give American companies to come and help us to improve on our education, to improve our uh, infrastructures like electricity, and we also trade with the Russia. We we'll bring the Russia in to come and help us with our oil and gas business. We we'll bring the Chinese in to come and help us with our railway and road construction. And our people can learn from that and be self-sustainable in years to come. We are we are talking trade. It's not about that somebody is coming to enslave you. It's not about somebody to come colonize you. Full and near colonizing you right now, using Britain as a backup. Britain give them military support. <laughs> that is why our political leaders are scared. You also speak to President Trump, get his support, and you are not going to get the support for free. You're going to give American business. Fine, I want to trade with them. Let me tell you something. Look at me, and I used to use Adenuga as an example. If you are to choose between me and Adenuga as a friend, Folks, who are you going to choose? Of course, I'm going to go for Adenuga myself. Because if Adenuga is my friend, I will just call him up. Hey, mom, mom, I need one million. Mom, broke being called me. Mafun dollar, mafun dollar. He's going to give me right. One million naira. She will mafun dollar. To be a lobby. I didn't get away. I'm going to go. All right, me now. You benefited from him, right? So if we do business with America, we are going to benefit from them. They are superior. Superior not in terms of being, but in terms of their education, their education is superior than us. Their, their, their infrastructure, they have superior infrastructure than us. We will learn from them. What exactly are you going to learn from the Fulani? Buhari and General Alani Akini are age mates. Age mates. Can you see the product Buhari turned out to be compared to General Alani Akini Ade? Fashola and Atiku are almost the same caliber. Can you compare the quality of Fashola standing at the United Nations with Atiku standing at the United Nations? Yoruba, you are superior to Fulani in all ramification. Fulani has no power. They just have the backing of, of Britain. That's all. Particularly the English. It is the English who are propping them all. It is not about religion. Like I said, the English are predominantly Christian, but they are supporting the Fulani to subjugate the Yoruba because of our wealth. So we work with America, we work with Russia, we work with China. So be England, Shema, Wasoko, Makojuwa, with all of this support. Okutie, Tumwari. So you get it, folks. The Fulani don't contribute anything to the, to the revenue of Nigeria. But they are taking the lion's share because they have enshrined in the constitution of Nigeria that we are going to pull the fund together and we are going to share this revenue according to the number of state, number of local government and population. And they all have it all because they have created it for themselves. Fake. Fake. Buhari will never talk. This is the corruption we're talking about. Let me give you an example. You have three friends. Eh? You have three friends. One has a PhD, one has a master's degree, and the other one has a Bachelor of Science degree. Three friends. The one with the PhD is he hand more money than the one with masters. The one with master hands more money than the one with bachelors of science. So what the constitution of Nigeria is saying is that Mr. PhD, who is receiving 100 naira per month, who put his money into one account. Mr. Master's degree holder 
who is receiving 70 naira per month will put the 70 naira into the same account. Mr. Bachelor degree holder, who is receiving 50 naira, will put the money into the same account. So all of this money will be together. And then you are going to then share it, not even equally. Because the one who has bachelor's degree has so many children. Because while the other were, were going to school for master and PhD, he was having sex with his wife. So he has so much money. Uh, so, uh, so much, he has so many children. So he's not telling you that because he has so many children, you will get more of the money you have contributed. <laughs> that is exactly what unity system is all about in Nigeria. I was have and he created more states, government, and more fake population to themselves. And they wrote the constitution of Nigeria. They now put it in the constitution of Nigeria that we are going to share this money according to the number of states we have, according to the number of local government we have, according to the population we have. They have taken you as slaves. You think uh, the Fulani has the wealth with all to do that? They don't. They've been supported by the English. That is it. And you say you don't want to work with America. So, Buhari says that the looter of national resources are going to be arranged in court. <laughs> Mr. Buhari is just fooling you. The looted resources of Nigeria belong to the Yoruba people and the Niger Delta. Yoruba contribute 49% of the revenue of the federal government. The Niger Delta contribute 44 percent the combination of yoruba 49 percent plus 44 percent is 93 percent so all the money that has been looted in nigeria belong to the yoruba people and the niger delta people not to the Igbo, not to the Hausa fulani all the money looted in nigeria it is yoruba money so mr why is telling you that it's going to cause corruption no it's not going to cause corruption it's just running a propaganda when he came, before Mr. Buhari, you know Mr. Buhari was the president, head of state in 1984 to 1985, 1983 to 1985. Yeah, he was yesterday. state. After he was ousted by uh, Babangida, Babangida had spent eight, Babangida spent eight years, Shonekon three years, Abasha five years, Abu Salam one year, Obasanjo eight years, John, uh, Yaradua three years, Jonathan five years. Yet, we were unable to curb corruption. This stupid Buhari came back and telling you he's going to call corruption. After his uh, regime ended in 1985, we have had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different head of government. Seven. Yes, we cannot call corruption. So it is this fake Buhari man that will call corruption for you. <laughs> we know what is corruption in Nigeria. Corruption is simply mean when you use your resources to build schools, hospitals, in Ausa Fulanila, that is corruption. It is what you call slavery. During slavery and colonialism, the English told Yoruba resources to build England. Fulani are stealing Yoruba resources to build the North. <laughs> you are still a slave, Yoruba. But our generation is going to hand this. We're going to hand this. That's why we need the support of President Trump. He's a very good man, a very good Christian, a very good Christian. That's why Adeboye and the rest of them need to make contact. For the interests of their own children and the children yet unborn. We can't allow the English to continue to enslave us indirectly. We know they are the one behind it. That's why I said it in the beginning. Fulani don't have the wealth with all. They don't have the military men. They don't have the resources. They don't have the wealth. Let me tell you one secret. If the Yoruba, you should take over a papa of Tinkapot and the entire Yoruba waterways. Tell me how the other Fulani are going to defeat us in terms of military. So we have a airplane, nothing jar, nothing jar weapons. Let have a weapon one by two ship me. English go as soon. No, you have to come. That bag that will go for that way. We go that bag very soon here. At this point, what the coast guard is there? A papa wolf, Tinka Port, Lagos International Airport, and Lagos Stock Exchange. What the coast guard is there? To run and board. We see there chilling. We see there chilling. It is our terrain. I'm hobby. I'm a blue book we have me because we go pay or pay you back. I'm going to show you now, and you're going to agree with me. Understand? You're going to agree with me. So, the corruption Mr. Buhari is talking about is just grandstanding. The leaders of Nigeria from the north, who divided Shokoto State, a single state prior to 1976, into four states by 1991, and with 80 three local governments from merely 20 local governments in 1976 are the looters 
of Yoruba world and the Niger Delta resources. They are the people that should be prosecuted. <laughs> All of them are criminals. All Hausa Fulani are criminals. Tinubu, Ribadu, name them. They are criminals. These are the people that must be prosecuted, including Buhari. And I'm going to shock you something Buhari did. You said you want to fight corruption. You must be out of your mind. They created more states, more local government. They gave themselves fake population. They said they are the most populated. But when we are doing VAT receive every month, <laughs> Lagos State is generating 60% of Nigerian VAT. VAT simply means, like I said, say stars. Tobara bata, tobara gado, tobara ogi, tobara moin moin, tobara gokupa, tobara rasho, ngoti VAT in genie, go gwe len son VAT lorie. Ibi ten yon bak po si, ni VAT ten po. Wana wana, wani mwa population, but mwa generate VAT ye. Wati mwa be fake, yon ko jo si ye. Mwa fi fool yon rubani, but we are waking up. We are waking up. The pasa wosa fulani, who divided Kano state, a single state, to 1991 into Kano and Jigawa state and increased its numbers of local government area of less than 20 in 1967 to 71 local government by 1991 are the looters of Nigeria who must be prosecuted. They are the criminals. They created all the state for themselves and put in your constitution that we are going to we are going to be sharing money according to the number of state. Can you just imagine that? Look at what I'm doing. For instance, I take my time every now and then to research, to research, to read, to read, bring ideas, look everywhere for information. Somebody sit down in pub with different girlfriends every now and then. I like girls as well. But I'm busy doing research for the interest of the Yoruba nation. Now, people now recognize me. People are now saying that, okay, well, exactly what do you want? I keep telling them I want to do the work of I'm not negotiating. So somebody who has been drinking away his life you now would not sit around in front of a computer and condemn my research and say it's rubbish. No, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. It's the same way the unity system we have in Nigeria. It is. You just take money from Yoruba land to build hospitals, to build schools, to build railways for the Aousa Fulani. When 200 Yoruba children are dying every day from sanitation-related diarrhea, 1,000 Yoruba women die every day from childbirth. Folks, are we not going to think about that? You're Yoruba first and foremost. You should think about the interests of your people first and foremost. That is called self-preservation. If you are an economist, you will understand it. Adam Smith propagated the concept. He called it self-interest. You think a farmer, that's what Adam Smith said. A farmer does not go to work to go and plant cassava because he likes you. He wants to make money. It's self-interest. So what exactly is the self-interest of the Yoruba? The self-interest of Fulani is that they want to subjugate the Yoruba nation, but they can't do it alone. So they enlisted the support of the English. So the English are approving them or giving them military weapons, giving them military training, continue to harass the Yoruba people. We're going to end it. If the English can vote for Brexit, in order for them to control the number of people who come in and out of their country, the Yoruba young are saying, we want to control our port, we want to control our waterways, we want to control our resources in Yoruba land. We are declaring for Ududua Republic. If the English want to stop us by continuing to work with the Fulani, we will stop the English. We will stop you. We have to remind you of what Olayin Kabat Makoli did, of what Aulawa did, of what Samuel Adai Krala did. They confronted you. You see, you know, one of my role models is Wilson Churchill. You know, he's an Englishman. Miss Wilson Churchill wasn't like Mandela. In the face of organized violence, Wilson Churchill rallied around his people and asked them to fight till death. That was how Hitler was defeated. But Mandela was calling for non-organized, non-violence. Non Wilson Churchill did not negotiate with Hitler. He rallied around his people and called them to harm to confront Hitler, and Hitler was defeated. It's my role model. People who want to fight against injustice that will come out and damn the consequences, confront whatever they need, they want to confront and get defeat. These are the people I want to be like. And we will get to the Dua Republic. Everybody thinks it's a joke, but people are signing on to it. We will get it. We will get it. We know the target.
we know it's the English is responsible for holding us behind. We will get it. Now, I was talking about Mr. Buhari saying he's grandstanding that he wants to curb corruption. You remember in 2003, majority of you may have forgotten, Mr. Obasan just said that he would like to do national ID card, whereby you're going to have your fingerprints in that ID card. That national ID card will have curbed this fake population of the Ausa line, claiming that they have the highest population in Nigeria. But you know what Buhari said in 2003? He said no the North will not accept national ID card. Somebody is he's not telling you today that I want to curb corruption. I want to curb corruption. When you continue to claim that you, are, you, are, you, are, you have the highest population in Nigeria, it's all fake. It's not curbing corruption. What we are going to do to the full and believe you, we want to prostrate from our in our Yoruba, Omi Wali. We know what economic blockage is. Of course, the English is going to come with the military weapon to come and help our Safulani to take over our port by the time we go there. But we know what we are going to do. The resources there has benefited the Fulani since 1966. So this is this is the idea. Because if you want to fight Aralie, Chuye, Tuban no Aralie to do a Wuto Jo, Aratama Bedu, we won't will eat to the Tole no Aralie to do a Wubai, Tuban Mu Arata, our form of Juni. We will blow up everything. The English who are helping the Fulani to control and subjugate us, we will now see what we are going to live on. And we will bring in America, we will bring in Russia, we will bring in China to come and help us to reconstruct it. And Fulani are going to pay. Aousa are going to pay. Both Aousa Fulani in Nigeria and the Niger Republic and Chad Republic, you will pay for the reconstruction of all our ports because you will have to import your goods and services through our waterways. But if you choose to go through Ivory Coast, it will be very expensive for you. So however you like it, you will pay high tariff unless you give up what belongs to us. This slavery will hang. If my ancestors, my grandparents can defeat the English and send them out of Yoruba land, we will send you out of Yoruba land, the flag. Believe me, we are going to send you out of Yoruba land. So this is what Mr. Buhari did. He rejected the national ID card. Somebody said that I want to curb corruption. The first thing you need to do is that everybody must have fin their fingerprint in a card. So that will tell you the number of people we are. But Buhari doesn't want it in 2003. Immediately that, Obasan just said, okay, I don't care. He accepted. You know, Obasan was the one who gave them Sharia. As about the, at about the same time, the Yoruba were demanding for regional government. This idiot refused to give us regional government, but he gave the Fulani and Aousa, he gave them Sharia. It was the Yoruba who said to him, Obasan we need national ID card. This is what is done in, uh, in the United Kingdom. We all have a card. But Buhari was the one that led. He said, I don't want cards for my people because he doesn't want us to know the number of Hausa <laughs> Fulani. They, keep, they continue to give you fake population. He's just grandstanding that he's fighting corruption. He's one of the most corrupt women being in Nigeria. By the way, are you aware? Go and check because what I'm saying is always far. Buhari remains the only living Nigeria to have ousted a legitimate government from power an elected government from power there is no woman being in nigeria whether dead or alive that has removed an elected government Buhari remains the only one yet yoruba voted for him somebody who commit coup who remove a civilian government from power you voted for him i think we should just remove him too you voted for him anyone who believes Buhari will cop corruption must be crazy <laughs> Buhari is a very corrupt man when you have national ID card, eh, you will know the you will know the number of people in Nigeria, but they will never accept the full anybody because they use fake population to steal Yoruba resources. They use fake population to say Nigerian problem is Nigerian problem is not corruption. Nigerian problem is unitary system in a multi ethnic multicultural society. Let me tell you one thing. Some of you don't. Some of you folks don't like Mr. Tinubu, Ashwaju Tinubu, rather. But if Ashwaju Tinubu is the president of Nigeria, he will say guide the interests and welfare of the Yoruba people more than 100 Buhari. It's self-preservation. Tinubu brought in Atiku in 2007. He brought in Ribadu in 2011. He brought in Buhari in 2015. All these three individuals 
are all Fulani. Why are they not supporting Tinubu to be president of Nigeria in 2019? They don't trust him because he's Yoruba. Tinubu, you're there. If you read the history of Tinubu, eh, he has always been pro Yoruba all his life until recently in 2015 when he made a mistake by supporting Buhari. He's a very good man. He's a very, very good man. Open she mistake in 2015. So all of you that are condemning him, it is all your cup of tea. So, folks, God is not crazy for making you Yoruba. So, if Babangida, Shonekon, Abacha, Abu Salam, Obasanjo, Yaradua, and Jonathan, with none of them able to curb corruption, so you think Buhari is the one that is going to curb corruption. Corruption is not your problem in Nigeria. No! It is the unitary system that takes Yoruba wealth, that takes Niger Delta Hoy wealth, to fund development in Aousa Fulani. That is the problem of Nigeria, the unitary system, not corruption. The rubbish Mr. Buhari is talking about is nonsense. <laughs> A man who doesn't want national ID card. That is when, well, that is what is going to tell us the number of people in Nigeria. You know, you know the excuse they are giving for Fulani X-Men saying that there is no grass in the north. You know what that means? That alone will tell you that the population is in the south, near water. People are moving away from deserts. But that it is only in Nigeria whereby you have more people living in the desert than people living in coastal area. <laughs> Completely rubbish country. It is the English that is responsible for the shit all of the country. They are the, the English are the world. But let me tell you all the Yoruba living in England. Your life will be more better if you live in Yoruba land. The English are controlling your resources. You think they are doing you a favor by living in their country. They are controlling your resources. They are giving Aousa Fulani military support. I keep telling everybody, and I challenge uh, Boris Johnson. I like him so much, I want him to be prime minister because I'm voting, I've been voting for conservative since I used to vote for liberal Democrat. I've never voted for Labour. When I get into a new country, I vote for a party that thinks about the interests of the indigenous people of that country. So because the black people were voting for labor, I said, no, I want the best interest for the Yoruba. So I'm going to vote for the people who want the best interest for the English. But I wasn't able to choose between, because I don't really understand the system when I came in. So I was voting for liberal Democrat. I registered with them. Liberal Democrat really, really helped me to get my hands on research. I worked with a number of their MPs. They are currently leader. I've worked with them. I was moving all about with them, campaigning with them. They have a particular com uh, company. I'm not going to mention their name because I work there as well. They write all the speeches and everything for the leaders. I was working there. I was picking up ideas. But I started voting for conservative later because I love uh, people who want to protect the interests of the English, first and foremost. That was why I started voting for conservative. But they are responsible for the nonsense the Fulani are doing in Nigeria. So Nigeria is not sustainable under a hundred UDC system. Let me tell you something, the most corrupt country in the world is the United States. Look at the fake news, CNN and the rest of them, with all their fake news against President Trump. The most corrupt country in the world is the United States of America. The country still works because it has a sustainable political system. I said to you that the unity system of Nigeria is the problem, is the problem. Since the suspension of regional government in 1966, we have had problems in Nigeria. There's nothing like the feeding bottle monthly allocation we have in Nigeria in the United States. The America don't have centralized police system or armed forces. Have you ever seen the governor of California, the governor of Arizona, the governor of Texas, or the governor of American state going to President Trump and say they want to collect a monthly, a monthly allocation? Have you ever seen that? But that is what you do in Nigeria since 1966. In America, there's no centralized police system or armed forces. Each state has its own police system and its own armed forces. They call it National Guard. But in Nigeria, Fulani are saying, ah, no, we can't allow the Yoruba to have their own police. Because, of course, we, will be, we have the brain. We will bring the best of Yoruba brain to run our police system. And they are going to be well equipped. They are not this crude Arusa Fulani police you have all around. They are scared. If we have our own regional police, they are scared that the Yoruba police will be well-trained, well-sophisticated to confront any challenges. So they don't want it. They want a centralized police system. They don't want decentralized armed forces. There is decentralized armed forces in the United States of America. I challenge this man. 
Pastor Tunde Bakari, when he said there was nothing like that. Every state in America has its own military. They call it National Guard. I will suffer and you don't want us to decentralize the armed forces. If you decentralize the armed forces, do you know the implication of that? Igbo will have their own regimental armed forces. Yoruba will have their own regimental armed forces. You know the kind of brain we have? All the Yoruba who are in the military all over the world who will be brought to bear into the Yoruba regimental armed forces. Do you think Aousa Fulani will be able to harass you with Fulani X men when we have a, a decentralized forces? So they want to control you. They have been told by the English to do all of this. English is the problem. The shit hole you have in Nigeria today is the responsibility of the self serving career politicians in England. We will put a stop to this nonsense. We will put a stop to this nonsense, believe you me. They don't want it. They have the world. Look, for example, in the United Kingdom. United Kingdom is more corrupt than Nigeria. Believe you me, they are corrupt. People who go to other people's country to enslave them and they steal the resources of this country to develop their own country. Are they not corrupt? Why is the Fulan being supported by the English if the United Kingdom is not corrupt? The United Kingdom knows that Nigeria, the wealth of Nigeria belongs to the Yoruba, belongs to the people of the Niger Delta. But they are propping up Fulani. They are giving them military training. They are telling them to do this, to do that. They are very corrupt in the United Kingdom. But regardless, that country works because of its enduring political system. England, Scotland, Wales, and Northern Ireland together, they call themselves the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. That is the name they call themselves. Yet, they go by different football teams, they go by different police system, different educational policy, different currency design, different healthcare system, even different regimental armed forces. They have different regimental armed forces. United Kingdom of Great Britain is made up of four ethnic groups, the English, Scottish, Welsh, and Northern Irish. They are one country, but inside that one country, they do their things differently. The English football team is different from the Scottish football team. It's different. The Scottish football team is different from the Northern Irish football team. Northern Irish football team is different from the Wales football team. They don't have the same football team. The English football league is different from the Scottish football league. Their healthcare is different. The healthcare in Scotland is run differently from the healthcare in England. Their education is different. If you live in England, you go to free school from primary to high school, but you pay for university. In Scotland, you go to free school from primary school up to university. Everything is differentiated. Their currency is called pound sterling. The only currency which is all in pound sterling. But pound sterling design in England is not the same pound sterling design in Scotland. Yet, they are in one country called the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. Everything is differentiated. The police system in England is not the same thing as the police system in Scotland. Everything is Even they have regimental armed forces. Scottish regiment is different from the Queen's regiment in England. I also don't want it. Hausa Fulani don't want it. If you go to the United States, their demographic is always along racial line. You go to the United States, you Google it, you will know the number of people who are blacks in the United States. You know the number of people who are white. You know the number of people who are Hispanic in the United States. Everything is well arranged. If you come to the United Kingdom, you will know the number of people who are English. You will know the number of people who are Scottish, the number of people who are Welsh, the number of people who are Irish. But in Nigeria, <laughs> people are so fake. They call themselves one Nigeria. They cannot openly associate with their ethnicity. Imagine, we call our administrative division South South, South East, South West, North Central, North East, North West. We are so fake, we cannot call our region Yoruba region, Igbo region, Ijo region, Awusa Fulani region, Kanuri region. We cannot. Everything is fake about us. And you continue to blame white people. They are racist. You are black. You are gullible. Everything. Ghana is practicing regional system of government. Not unitary system. Ghana administrative decision uh, division is along ethnic identity. You have uh, Ashanti region. 
Brong, Ashafo region, Central region, Eastern region, Greater Accra region, Northern region, Upper East region, and Upper West region. The only thing I disagree with the Ghana regional system of government is that it is the president that appoints regional prime minister. That is the difference. But everybody in Ghana is divided along their identity. South Africa is practicing regional system of government. It's a very beautiful system like we had in Nigeria in 1951 up to 1966. In South Africa, the administrative divisions are named after the ethnic groups within the country, such as Eastern K, Free State, Goteng, KwaZulu Nata region, Lipompo region, Upumalanga region, Northwest region, and Northern Cape region. That is how they do. The beauty of South African regional government is that it is the people in each region that elect the prime minister. The prime minister is not appointed by the president, like Ghana. That's different. That is what is that is still causing from some trouble in Ghana because the president appoints the prime minister for the region. No, in South Africa, it is not the president that appoints the uh, premier for the region. The people voted them. That is why the most developed region in South Africa is Western Cape Town, run by white white South Africans. It's a very developed region. It's better. So Yoruba cannot achieve that, and we keep saying that we are the most educated out of Africa. Nigerian problem is not corruption. It is the full and who are corrupt. They created more state to themselves, more local government for themselves, more fake population for themselves, and they now put in the constitution that the Yoruba money will be put in one account with Awusa Fulani money, with the Igbo money, and then we now share this money according to the number of state, number of local government. They don't have the power. They don't have the military men. They don't have that level of intelligence. They don't have the civilization, but they are backed up by the self-serving career politicians in England. It is the English that are supporting the Fulani to subjugate the Yoruba nation. That is why the Yoruba everywhere, you must speak up. If you are afraid to die, eh, your children's generation will suffer after your death. In case you don't know this, 200 Yoruba children die every day from sanitation-related diarrhea. I have not mentioned those who are dying from malaria. I have not mentioned those who are dying from uh, typhoid fever. You have to speak up for the interests of your children. You must end this slavery. So like I said, the current unity system is the cause of Nigerian problem. And this is why it's going to get interesting. I'm going to get the Igbo worked up right now. The Igbo and the Awusa Fulani do not want genuine restructuring. They don't want it. <laughs> I'm going to expose them tonight again. I always expose them. The Yoruba and the Igbo, we are not allies. We are enemies. The Yoruba and the Awusa, we are not allies. We are enemies. All of us are enemies in Nigeria. And it will be better for us to go our separate way than continue to forge imaginary unity. It's not working. Nigeria problem is the unity system you are having in a multicultural, multi-ethnic country. The Yibo and the Awusa Fulani, they do not want genuine restructuring, and I'm going to expose them for that tonight. A restructuring that is based along the regional system, the Yibo don't want it, Awusa Fulani don't want it. And I'll tell you why. In any case, restructuring is too late. And I'll tell you why restructuring is too late. They will continue to get worked up now. They have been sending comments area. Why is restructuring too late? Within Nigeria, there are three major nations. Three major nations. These are the Yoruba, 25% of Nigeria, Awusa, 20% of Nigeria, and the Igbo, 17% of Nigeria. But because of the subjugation of the Awusa people by the Fulani, oftentimes you see people saying Awusa Fulani together. And then Awusa Fulani, as one entity, they are not one entity, by the way, but we have, because Fulani have subjugated the Awusa, because Awusa Fulani has all of these states, Shokoto, Jigawa, Kebi, Kano, Northern Kaduna, Awusa Fulani has all of these states, seven states, but all of their governors, all of their emirs are Fulani, and Fulani are only 9% of the population, 
Aousa are 20% of the population, but Aousa have been relegated to second class citizen in their own land. So oftentimes you see people say Aousa Flani. So combined population of Aousa Flani is 29%. So these three nations can only live together in peace. They have three options to live together in peace. We are all enemies. The Yoruba, look, let me tell you one thing. You have the uh, the Fulani controls the presidency, the Fulani controls the National Assembly, the Fulani controls the judiciary in Nigeria, the Fulani controls the military, the Fulani controls all the intelligence, and the Fulani controls all the federal civil service. This is everything the Fulani controls. We are now saying that they are bad. Right. Fine. They have always been bad. If you give all of this position, all of this power to the evil, they will be worse than Fulani. They will kill everybody. Igbo are always claiming other people's land. The same way Fulani are doing. Fulani headsmen are saying that they want cartoon colony everywhere. That's what they are claiming other people's land. It's land grabbing. That is the exact thing the Igbo would do if they have all of this power in the hand of the Fulani currently. The Igbo and the Aousa Fulani are the problem of Nigeria. They don't want anything called restructuring that is genuine. The restructuring that they want is fake. We're going to expose them. So there are three options for Nigeria to live in peace. Number one is unitary system. I will be, see, when I was doing this research work, when I was writing this uh, presentation, I want to make it very easy for young Yoruba because I know people don't have the knowledge that some other people have. Some, some people are very precocious, very intelligent. However, things may be difficult to just explain it to them. They grab it one, but some people are not very intelligent. So I'm going to go down very low so that you understand the basic concept of these three options that I'm going to give you. Nigeria needs three, three options to live in peace. Number one, unitary system. Number two, regional system. Number three, separation. So I'm going to, I'm going to give you that. I'm going to give you that. Let's look at unity system. Unity system simply means that the money, the constitution I read to you, Unity system simply means that the money generated by the Yoruba, by the Aousa Fulani and the Hebo will be put together into one account and shared according to the number of states, number of local government, number of population, figure, and land mass. That is what unity system is all about. So it simply means that if Yoruba is contributing 49 era to the account, if Yoruba is generating 49 era, the 49 era will go to the federal government account. Aousa is contributing 2 naira 50 kobo. The 2 naira 50 kobo will go into the federation account. Igbo is bringing 1 naira 50 kobo. The 1 naira 50 kobo will go into the federation account. And we are going to share this money according to the number of states, according to the number of local government, according to the population of the people, and according to land mass. So the Yoruba that is contributing 49 naira, but we don't have the same number of states and local government and the population as Aousa Fulani. So we that we are contributing 49 naira will end up getting little money. That is what it is. This is there is all about. It's shit of a system. It does not pay anybody other than Fulani. Because Fulani has more states, more local government, fake population, and more landmass. So unity system pays them. Unity system pays the evil, but on one condition. If an Igbo is the president of Nigeria, that is the only way unity system will pay there. Because what unity system means is that you control everybody's resources for your own benefit. Even if a Yoruba is elected the president of Nigeria, the Yoruba are still at a disadvantage under unity system. Because we have the money. But we don't have the number of states, we don't have the number of local government, we don't have the population, we don't have land mass. You understand? Even if a Yoruba is president of Nigeria, under unity system, we are still going to be suffering. So unity system pays the Igbo and the Aousa Flan. Now let's go to regional system. You know, I'm making it very simple so that you can easily get the concept. Now let's go to regional system. Regional system simply means that the money generated in Yoruba land, the money generated in Aousa Flan land, the money generated in Igbo land, will not be put into the same account. Beautiful. You say beautiful. Instead, each region will spend what it earns. So if Yoruba is generating 49 naira, the 49 naira under the general government will be for the use of the Yoruba. If Igbo is generating 20 kobo, 
that 20 combo will be for the Igbo. If AUSA is generating two naira, that two naira will be for AUSA under the general government. You will say to me, that is beautiful because I have friends that I've gone to school with. Some of them are so rich. Some of them are so rich, they have companies of their own. You understand? They are richer than me. So am I going to be jealous of them? No. They are richer than me. That's, that's good for them. They roll with their life. I roll with mine. You understand? So that is what regional system is all about. Whatever money I have belongs to me. Whatever money you have belongs to you. Life is peaceful. Life is peaceful. We all roll because Ikao Doga, that is it. Regional system of government hmm, pays only the Yoruba because the Yoruba has the wealth. It does not pay the Awusa Fulani at all. Even if one of them is elected president under regional government, Awusa Fulani will still not benefit from regional government. The Igbo too, they are at a, at a disadvantage. The regional system of government will not benefit the Igbo because there's no wealth in Igbo land. The Igbo people will continue to argue with you till tomorrow. There's no wealth in Igbo land. From what we have done, the calculation we have done, Yoruba contribute 49% of the income of Nigeria. The people of the South-South region contribute 44% of the income of Nigeria. Awusa Fulani only contribute 2.5% and Igbo contribute 1.5%. The people of the Middle Belt contribute 2% and the Kanuri people contribute only 1%. You see? The wealth is in Yoruba land and in the Nigeria Delta. So if you have regional government, it means that Yoruba will only use its own wealth. The Igbo will be struggling here and there. The Awusa Fulani too will be struggling. So regional government pays the Yoruba people. That is why only the Yoruba wants restructuring that is genuine. <laughs> restructuring where you have regional government. The Igbo don't want it. They are just being fake. Awusa don't want it. That's why they continue to say, we are going to have states as federating unit. Regional government means you have region as federating unit, not state. The regions will create their state and the state will create their local government. But the Igbo don't want, they want this kind of system, unitary system. What the Aousa Fulani and Igbo want is fake restructuring, like I said to you. A restructuring that recognizes the 36 states as the federating unit rather than ethnic region. That's what the Igbo want. The Igbo want equal number of states. They don't want, both of them are the criminals because they don't have the wealth. They depended on the wealth of the Yoruba people and the wealth of the Niger Delta. They would never, you can never see one single Igbo that says all Igbo speaking states should be a region. Abia, Imo, Enugu, Eboin. Anambra plus Igbo in Delta, Igbo in Riva. Pull them up together as a region. Igbo don't want it. They want a fake Biafra that includes other people's land, that includes other non igbo speaking people. So that's what they want. So I've described two systems for you. Unity system pays the Aousa Fulani, but it pays the Igbo, it does not pay the Yoruba. Regional government pays the Yoruba, it does not pay the Aousa Fulani, it does not pay the Igbo. Now we are left with one option, separation. Separation means that the three nations go their separate ways to form new countries of their own. This form of system pays everyone because there will be reduction in ethically motivated killing and predatory opportunity will end. Since 1945, we've been killing each other because we are in the same country. The moment we break up, you know the implication of breaking up? The moment Yoruba leaves Nigeria, we are going to have our own police. We are going to have our armed forces. All the Yoruba in U.S. military, all the Yoruba in military all across the world will be brought home. They shall be invited home. They will go into our military. All the Yoruba in police in uh, across Europe, in police in America, they will be brought back to Nigeria. We will have the best military in the whole of Africa. Believe you me. Majority of you don't know that South Africa has nuclear weapon. You don't know. We are going to have our own nuclear weapon too. Our law wanted to start to use nuclear weapons to generate electricity as far back as 1952. The English stopped him through Tafara Balewa. You don't know this, you know. So that is the implication of separation. When we have separation, believe you me, there will be peace because Igbo will build their own armed forces. 
But I'm surprised. I don't know why, why, if they will do it because the Igbo intention has always been Biafra. If there is no Nigeria, they want Biafra. The Biafra they want is to have other peoples included in their own country. I wish them all the best. It is not a concern of the Yoruba. Yoruba just want to have Yoruba speaking people into our own of the dual republic. And we know where our territories are. So if we have separation, we go our separate way. Believe me, we are not going to fight. We are likely going to trade with each other. We are likely going to be trading with each other. So, even where I have you, friend. Yeah, that's what I said. We're likely going to trade with each other. Now, let me explain to you why Igbo and Aousa Fulani want a unitary system, but but not Yoruba. This is, let, don't let anybody fool you that the Igbo said we we are cool. We're we're not bored. We want restructuring. They don't want restructuring. The only restructuring that is genuine is simple. All the Igbo speaking states and Igbo speaking area will come under Igbo region. All the Yoruba speaking people, these are Yoruba in Kwara, Yoruba in Kogi, Yoruba in Akoko Edo in Edo State, the Shekiri in Delta, and all other Yoruba speaking states like Lagos, Ogun, Oyo, Ondo, Ekiti, and Oshun. All of this will come under the Yoruba Autonomous Region. The Igbo don't want it. They want states. You know the implication of state? It doesn't pay Yoruba. State as a federated unit. All the Yoruba speaking people will not galvanize forces together to be the best out of Africa. When you have state, it decreases our capacity to work together as a, as a people. You remember, there was a time Lagos State was going for national ID card. Ondo State was going for national ID card. Nothing was happening in Oshu State as for national ID card. Nothing was happening in Oyo State. Nothing was happening in Kwara State. Nothing was happening in Kogi State. Because you have state. But where we have a region, it's going to be a regional policy. When we decide at the regional government of the Yoruba that we're going to have national ID card in Yoruba land, everywhere, everybody in Yoruba land will have it. So states does not pay us. That is the means of dividing the Yoruba further. Anybody that is saying regional government, like the APC, APC are criminal anyway, by the way, APC, that the nonsense APC is saying that they want state as federating unit, they are all criminals. I feel like killing all of them. They are terrible people. They are bringing down the progress of the Yoruba nation. It's a criminal organization. Tinubu made a terrible mistake for going into a, a partnership with barbarians. So the Igbo wants state as federating unit. They don't want region. Why is this so difficult for the Igbo to have a region? All Igbo speaking people who have a region, stop shouting Biafra. Start shouting for Igbo nation. You are going to be like Lesotho in, in, inside South Africa. Lesotho is a country, but the country is surrounded by South African prophecies because they don't have Shola. It is inside South Africa. So that is how likely Igbo are going to end up with in case Nigeria brings. Because you are going to be on your home, by the way. But it is not my own reckoning. It is just what I believe should happen. So I'm going to tell you why the Igbo want unitary system. All this agitation for restructuring is all fake. Any restructuring that says that state will be the federating unit. We are not like United States. Like I said in the beginning of my presentation, seven different people made of what is United States. We are like United Kingdom, where you have four regions, ethnic groups, English, Scottish, Wales, and Northern Ireland. That is how Nigeria should be structured, if at all you want to restructure Nigeria. Not by state like America. In Nigeria, let the Yoruba have Yoruba region. So the prime minister of the Yoruba region will create states. The state governor will then create local government. The local government will create districts. The district head will create wards. That was how it was from 1952 up until 1966. The Igbo knows this. The Aousa knows this because they are criminal. They don't want that system. <laughs> They want state as federating unit so that they can continue to subjugate the Yoruba, divide the Yoruba, use the wealth of the Yoruba. Their target is Lagos. It's our port and waterway. And I said something. All the industrial area estates in Lagos were built with the cocoa money generated from Oshun, from Ondo, from Ekit. It's an investment for them. They will benefit from the wealth that we are generating from Lagos now. Not Aousa Fulani and not the Igbo. Presently, the House of Lani contributes only 2.5% of the revenue of the federal government every month. But they get 30% of the revenue of the federal government monthly allocation under the current unity system. 
the Igbo contribute only 1.5% of the revenue of the federal government every month, but get merely, uh, but get in return 5% of the federal government monthly allocation. But the Yoruba, who contribute 49% of the revenue of the federal government every month, get nearly 8% of the federal government allocations. You see, it is the Yoruba resources that is developing the North. We contribute 49% of the revenue of the federal government every month. But when government, federal government is sharing monthly allocation, we get 8%. Fulani, Awusa Fulani, that is contributing only 2.5% to the revenue of the federal government, gets more than 30% every month from the monthly allocation. Unity system pays the Awusa Fulani and the Igbo, but not the Yoruba. Not the Yoruba. That's why I call it economic injustice. However, under the regional government, the Yoruba will keep its 49% contribution. The Awusa will keep its 2.5% contribution, and the Igbo will keep its 1.5% contribution. They don't want it. The three will, however, contribute 10% of their income to the federal government. So that is the system that is attainable. The people will keep what is generated from their own side, but they will make 10% contribution to the central government. The Igbo don't want it. The Awusa don't want it. That is why you take notice of them. They are always agitating for states as federating you. No, we are not states in Nigeria. We are ethnic groups. Regional government should be based on ethnic groups. That is why we said it is too late. We don't want it anymore. The restructuring the APC is clamoring for is fraud. It's targeted at using the Yoruba wealth for the development of the Awusa flag. It is fraudulent. The Igbo and Awusa flag are targeting Yoruba land, Yoruba port, Yoruba waterway. That is their target. We will shock you. Because Yoruba youth are no longer gullible. We know where the wealth is coming from. That was what I, why I said, some people said I was being threatened. You understand? Said they are going to assassinate me. They are going to. I said to them, I am not in the can. I'm an economist, and I point out the reality to the Yoruba. Igbo has no single infrastructure in Igbo land that can be destroyed that will affect Yoruba land. There is no single infrastructure in Awusa Fulani that can be destroyed that will have any impact on Yoruba land. But if I blow up a papa wall, Igbo and Awusa Fulani will go on. If I blow up Tinka Port, Igbo and Awusa Fulani will be affected. If Lagos International Airport is destroyed, Igbo and Awusa Fulani will be affected. If Lagos Stock Exchange is blown up, Igbo and Awusa Fulani will be affected. So we have so much. So when you say, I'm going to be killed, I'm going to be arrested, we have woken up so many Yoruba, they have looked up to me as a voice, and I keep telling them one thing, I want to make them leaders. Because a good leader will create further leaders. Let me tell you one thing about Lagos International Airport. Many of you Yoruba will not know this. Every year, over 25,000 commercial planes travel from Lagos International Airport to different destinations of the world. Lagos International Airport is the busiest airport in West Africa. It's the seventh busiest airport in the whole of Africa. It used to be the fifth busiest international airport in the whole of Africa until 2016, when it became number seven. 25,000 commercial planes travel from Lagos International Airport to different destinations of the world every year. On the average, on the average, we have about 200 passengers per aircraft. 200 passengers. When you multiply 200 by 25,000 uh, uh, commercial planes, we're talking about five million passengers. Folks, wait for this shocking. Each of these five million passengers pay 10,000 naira as care passenger duty. 10,000 naira as care passenger duty. When you multiply 10,000 naira by five million passengers, we're talking about 50 billion naira every year from Lagos International Airport. Folks, Yoruba, 50 billion naira generated from Lagos International Airport every year. Do you know what 50 billion can do for our children? We have 200 Yoruba children that die every day from sanitation-related diseases, sanitation-related diarrhea. 
We have over 1,000 Yoruba women that are dying every day from childbirth. You are generating 50 billion naira every year from Lagos International Airport. Everything goes to the north to the benefit of Ausa Flan. If you blow it up, it has no impact on us. It will stop Ausa Flan from controlling their resources. I give an example about Gala. Gala. If I'm lying, you can speak to USC Foods from USC Records. They sell 30 million pieces of Gala every day from Yoruba land. 30 million pieces of Gala Lenje every day. When we factor in the price, when we did the research, the price of Gala was 25 Naira. 5% 5 VAT from 25 Naira is 1 Naira 25 Kobo. When you multiply 1 Naira 25 Kobo by 30 million pieces of Gala that you eat every day, we are talking about 37.5 million Naira every day generated as VAT from Gala. Folks, this will fund free education for every Yoruba citizen in Yoruba. 37.5 million from Ghana. But the money is going to the north for the benefit of Ausa Fulani because they control the military. They control the presidency through the support of self serving career politicians in England. We go to that, folks. That is Ghana. I have just told you about Lagos International Airport. Let me shock you about Sovereign. Because you don't factor in all of this thing into your thinking. We drink 10 million bottles of soft drink per day in Yoruba land. 10 million. Whether Pepsi Cola, uh, Coca Cola, Seven No, Fanta, La Casera, you name it. We drink 10 million bottles. An average price of one bottle of uh, soft drink is around 100 naira. If you factor in 5% VAT, it comes to 5 naira. When you multiply 5 naira by 10 million bottles of soft drink we drink a day, that is 50 million naira. <laughs> Folks, what are you doing in London? Why are you washing their toilet in London when you get 50 million naira from drinking soft drink in a day in Yoruba? Why are you driving Kabu Kabu with all your with all your education in London? Why are you driving cab in America with all your education in London? That is why I said to Yoruba, you, you are gullible. There's so much wealth in Yoruba and we don't need to go to other people's country and waste away. But we are wasting away for one thing. Ausa Fulani have subjugated us. They have subjugated us. Ausa Fulani, through the support of the English. That is what you pay as VAT from drinking 10 million bottles of soft drink. Are you aware? If you want to find out, go to Guinness. Go to Nigerian Beauty's Company, the limited. Go to all the people that are producing beer. Every day in Yoruba land, we drink 5 million bottles of beer. Average price of a bottle of beer is around 300 naira. 5% VAT paid on 300 naira is 15 naira. When you multiply 15 naira by 5 million bottles of beer, we're talking about 75 million. VAT, Lord Jokon. You think that will not repair your road in Yoruba land? But why are your road bad? Why are Yoruba people dying from accident? Because your 75 million every day goes to Abuja. Ausa Fulani use it to buy weapon. If you talk, they kill you. We've got to stop it, folks. So if we blow things that are generating revenue for Yoruba, but the revenue are going to the Ausa Fulani benefit, if we blow it, we are not losing. This is our economist thing. We are not losing. By the time we blow it up, we take it up, we take our own Odudua Republic out of Nigeria. Folks, we're going to bring in white Americans. We're going to bring in Russia. We're going to bring in China. We're going to do business with them. We're going to trade with them. This is how you need to think, folks. Nigeria is a full of, it's a shithole. English is responsible for making your country shithole. They are the ones supporting Fulani with weapons. I hope you get it. So you look at it, look at all this money like it. Under regional government, the money will belong to the Yoruba people. But under the unitary government, the money goes into the federation account. If you can think straight, look at Lagos International Airport. 50 billion every day. K 
Kini moun she luo ni bo. Think about the Lagos State in generate 50 billion naira every year, rather. Kini moun joko she luo ni bo. 50 billion ti loso wa usa. Show mo katan kwenye CO2 emission. Awa aeroplane don phone ni le ni ke jayen. Wan e mi di CO2. To wan afet omo yu ba to mkulo wan afet kidney wan afet intestine wan afet body wan. Wan on ni medical. Ko si ka katan je free health. Bo bo wo 50 billion ton generate leko. Ko ti losi li a usa. Awa usa fi ng badu mo yin lara. Timba blow Lagos International Airport dan. Ko wu ko tun nou kankan lara ni. Omo yu lu ba lo mani Gatik International Airport. Omo Yoruba. Taba ti blo Lagos International Airport. Ama gbe fun kotun she. Ade ma fun Yoruba government 50% of the profit. Ono ade ki 50%. Ama niya on Yoruba investors. Ama invite. Ala ma ba Amerika she she. English yifi ya jenyi bote e mo. Gambari le. Fula ni le do goyon fi ya jenyi. English do wa le yoro toro vindu. English do wa le yoro toro vindu. Ama yibo o kinfe kbo to mi o wo yye. Ni o go statement ni ni mo so truth ni fat ni mo so ko so ko kan le yibo. Ma yi katon rawa. Regional government pays Yoruba. But awusa o ni ba. Bobo wo ti mo so yi. I le Yoruba lo mama wo. Awusa o ni ba. Ibo o ni ba regional government. Ma yi ki ibo ma fuli. Chora wan ton tele ibo le Yoruba wan PDP ni. Ibo ma shok ni wan tu dibo funga ambari. But I'm born only a one royal boy. I'm going to make an address about them. Ibo fairy general government. I will say fairy general government because fairy general government simply means what you earn, you spend. Whatever the Ibo are earning in their area belongs to them under the general government. Whatever the Yoruba are earning in our area belongs to us. Under regional government, the Yoruba will control our waterways, will control our ports, will control all our VAT, will control all the revenue generated across Yoruba land. Look, why the Fulani are controlling all our waterways, all our port, all our VAT, everything, the Igbo have turned Yoruba land into dumping ground. Fake drop, the Igbo dump it. Fake spear part, they dump it on us. Everything fake, they dump it on us. When you are sick, you take fake drug. You are, you are going to die more than the people who are also are killing. The fake drug, that, the fake drug kill more Yoruba than all the Fulani experts have killed. Who are bringing fake drug into Yoruba and the Igbo? Why the Awusa Fulani control our port, they control our waterways, they control all our revenue in Yoruba land, the Igbo have turned Yoruba land into dumping ground. They are involved in organized crime. Believe you me, I challenge people, when you go to Yoruba prison, 75 to 80% of prisoners you see there are no Yoruba. So Yoruba, you've been conquered on all fronts. But my generation is putting an end to all of this. Our industries have been dormant. They've gone into administration because we have turned Yoruba land into dumping ground. Igbo bring all manners of things and dump it on you in Yoruba land. That's why Igbo go do our own Yoruba shaman yellow. Yeah, I have raised the concern because I was once an optician, a dispensing optician. I've raised the concern. Why did Igbo do everybody say yellow in the Yoruba? Because you are taking fake drug. It is causing you jaundice. You are sick, but it is the Igbo who are bringing fake drug into Yoruba land. I will suffer and control all your government, all your revenue, everything. They control your politician. The Igbo control the rest of the world, of the everything. So they turn you into something. <laughs> Kidnapping, piracy, drugging, prostitution. Everything is done in Yoruba land by the Igbo. That is it. Yoruba land is a conquered territory by both Hausa Fulani and the Igbo. Folks, I'm not joking. It will take blood, sweat, and tears for us to get to the Dua Republic. And people are willing to do it. You just see my face. There are people who have commissioned and signed up to our course of action that they are willing to fight and die for the Dua Republic. So because of these people, because of these people, I'm very sober. If people could call me up and say they are willing to fight, and die for the cause of this greatness.
folks, I'm very sober. We have just to carry on for the sake of our children, for the sake of our children, children yet unborn. Nigeria must be divided along its natural boundary. Believe you me, the Yibo, the Awusa want one thing, unitary system. One thing, states as federating unit, because the target is the Yoruba well. Yoruba don't want that. So when you have the wealth, do you know how much money we get from custom in Yoruba land, being controlled by Awusa Fulani? A papa wolf. Go there tomorrow if I'm lying. 90% of the people working there are Awusa Fulani. So if you blow it up, Yoruba. We're going to bring in Yoruba all over the world. We're going to get loan to rebuild it. Awusa Fulani will pay for the reconstruction. Believe you me. Pardon, she mama boo in the mouth of my lot to a year around she tie you by the back. What by everything, Jay? We start from the scratch all over again. What he must stop insulting our collective intelligence, saying that he wants to fight corruption. The system is corrupt. The system that takes money from the Yoruba nation to the Awusa Fulani nation. Folks, that is it. That is it, folks. The 610 is corrupt, but the structuring is too late, folks. The structuring is too late. Folks, I'm not asking you to believe in me. I believe in myself. But I'm asking you to believe in yourself, that together we can do one thing. We can make Yoruba land great again. As long as the Yoruba nation is inside Nigeria, under the unity system, believe you me, we will continue to remain poor and miserable. The best solution for the Yoruba nation is to bring Yoruba land out of Nigeria completely. Yoruba added says, and it told the low, low. We are 25% of the total population of Nigeria, which is the majority. We contribute 49% of the revenue of the federal government. We produce 80% of the gross domestic product of Nigeria. We are the economic backbone of Nigeria. The same way whites in America are the economic backbone of the United States. The same way the English in Britain are the economic backbone of the United Kingdom. The Yoruba are the economic backbone of Nigeria. Anywhere in the world, it is the economic backbone that rules over others. We must rule over the Awusa Fulani. We must rule over the Igbo. But if the Awusa Fulani and the Igbo do not want us to rule over them, they are welcome to create their own country. They are welcome to go out of Nigeria. It is the Yoruba that must rule. So this is what I'm appealing to you, all the young Yoruba. We are the generation that is going to change the course of history. I thank you so much for joining me tonight. I have over 500 people watching me live. I'm very grateful, but I'm, we are not going to fail you. I am not doing one thing. I am not the leader. We are all the leaders. There are no followers. We will appeal to you for your support to take over Yoruba land for good. And we are going to take Yoruba land out of Nigeria. The first course of action we're going to do is that we will take over a Papa Wharf, we'll take over Tinker Port, we'll take over Lagos International Airport, and we're going to take over Lagos Stock Exchange. If Awusa Fulani military, currently in Nigeria, supported by the English, will not allow us to take over what belongs to us peacefully, we will destroy everything. And we are going to invite the United States of America. We're going to invite Russia. We're going to invite China. We're going to invite our special friend, the people to help us to reshape our country. They are our allies. They are our best friend. We would like to trade with them and we would like for them to be our best ally. The English are not our best ally because they have always supported the radical Fulani Islamists. Thank you very much. You have to take action. We must take over what belongs to your urbanish. We are the leaders. Thank you very much and good night. God bless you.